Hey guys, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to set up our development environment. Now this is going to be composed of three major things. First of all, we're going to need the Java development kit. Now the Java development kit is provided to us by Oracle and it uh, gives us a uh, Java runtime as well as the tools for compiling Java code. In addition to the JDK, we're going to need Android Studio. Now, Android Studio is the newly released official IDE for working with Android. In the early days of Android, or, well, as of like a year ago, Google recommended that we used Eclipse, the Java IDE Eclipse, using their official plugins in order to develop Android applications. Well, Eclipse is growing a little dated, to be honest. I know there are a lot of people who still like it and use it every day, but Google decided to go with a more modern Java IDE. So what they did was they forked the IDE from JetBrains, IntelliJ, and created Android Studio out of it. And Android Studio provides you all the tools that you need to build Android applications. So that's where we're going to be writing all of our code. If you're fami familiar at all with JetBrains' IntelliJ, you'll be right at home with Android Studio. It's a very, very nice package, and it was recently released uh, to the stable version, to the stable channel, which well, basically means let's go use that now. So all new Android development should be done using Android Studio. Now, after we install Android Studio, we'll still need a way to emulate or virtualize an Android device on our computer in case you don't have an Android device handy to work with. Even if you do, I highly recommend people use a virtualized or emulated environment to test and debug their Android applications. It's just significantly easier to work with when you have your, your Android screen on your computer as opposed to being you know, on your desk or whatever. Now, for some things you will need a physical device for if you want to do something with a camera or something like that, but using a virtualized or emulated Android device on your computer is very, very handy. It also allows us to spool up more than one instance because throughout this course, we're going to be talking about some level of networking, which will require us to have two Android instances side by side. Now, the Android SDK, uh, the Android SDK being the, the component that comes with Android Studio that allows us to create Android applications, provides you with what are called Android emulators. And they're Android emulators in the sense of the word emulator. Now, if you're not familiar with how Android works on devices, uh, Android is, is designed to run on the ARM CPU architecture, the ARM architecture, which you find in almost every single smartphone on the planet and tablet on the planet. Now, the ARM architecture is not compatible with the x86 architecture that you find on your PC or Mac, for that matter. What that means is that this emulator, what it does is it actually translates instructions in software between the, their, their ARM instructions to their X, corresponding x86 instructions. Now, unfortunately, that's very excruciatingly, miserably slow. The Android emulator is not fun to work with. The feedback loop is like 10 million years to go from compile to press a button on the screen. Now, there's a way around that slightly using what are called the Intel Haxim drivers, which actually do give you an x86 virtualized environment. But unfortunately, on Windows, they're very buggy. I ran into a, an inordinate amount of rendering bugs on my own machine when I was using them. So unfortunately, Google doesn't yet provide officially for Windows a suitable development emulator or virtualized Android device. So what happened was other companies kind of picked up the slack and started working on their own. One of those companies is Motion. Now what they did was they're basically a wrapper over the software product called VirtualBox. If you're familiar with virtualization, uh, VirtualBox is a, is a free open source um, uh, virtualization platform. And what they did was they wrapped around VirtualBox and then they distribute images of Android that are compiled to run on x86. And then VirtualBox virtualizes an x86 environment. You plop your image on that and blah, blah, blah. It just works and it's super fast and super awesome. That's the one we're going to be using. 
so what I mean, so basically it all boils down to we're going to be using Gany Motion to give us virtualized Android instances that run very, very well on our x86 platform. I do want to point out a side note. Microsoft is working on an Android virtualized device, and I'm really excited to see how that pans out. But unfortunately, it's not suitable yet for production use. Right right now, Jenny Motion does have a free version for them to learn on, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually, <laughs> thanks for, yeah. So Genie Motion is a paid application as well as a free application. Now, the free application is uh, just fine for development. All the features you need for development, you will have, uh, just with a little watermark that says for personal use only. So, um, so yeah, so I recommend go ahead and do that. If you don't want to use Genie Motion for any reason, your second best option is to use the Intel hacks and drivers. But if you're on Windows, they will be buggy. So basically, we have three things to install. We have the JDK, so we can compile Java code. We have the Android Studio, so that we can write Java code for Android. And we have Getty Motion, so we can run an instance of Android. Um, and a final thing that we also need, but it happens to be included with Android Studio, is we need the Android SDK in order to have all the libraries and other uh, additional compilers and packagers and fun stuff like that that we need to actually deploy and debug Android code with. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, what you're looking at is a completely 100% clean installation of Windows 8.1. I have none of the software installed, so you guys will see the complete process of installing this. So let's go ahead and start off with installing the JDK. So I'm going to open up a Chrome here. And uh, over here, I'm going to search Google for, well, JDK. I'm just going to type that in. And the first result uh, we're going to see under here on these little links, what we want is we want the JDK 7. So um, Android doesn't yet support uh, Java 8. So we're going to download the JDK 7, not the JDK 8. So let's go ahead and click on that. And um, end of public updates, blah, blah, blah. Now, where did that run down to? Okay, so scroll down for the Java SE Development Kit 7U75. Uh, go ahead and accept the license agreement. I, and if you're interested, you could read that, I suppose. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the JDK X64 installation because I'm running a 64-bit operating system at the moment. Now, fortunately, our downstream is uh, pretty nice. Business class internet. And uh, Oracle is pretty fast too, so won't have to pause the video for this download to complete. I seriously wasn't kidding about anything being installed in this computer. I have my recording software, and uh, that's about it, really. And Windows. Yeah, and Windows. Which, it's always fun installing Windows. It's my favorite thing to do, by the way. Especially <laughs> the updating part. Alright, so let's go ahead and click on the executable. Uh, you might want to pause the video if you haven't finished installing this, or you might want to skip ahead if you've already installed a JDK, uh, or specifically JDK 7. So let's go ahead and hit next. Uh, we want the development tools, of course, uh, source code, sure, and we also want a JRE. Uh, I especially want a JRE because I don't have a JRE installed at all, which you likely do. Uh, the, the JRE is the Java runtime, but like I said before, the JDK includes the JRE. You need the JRE to run Java, and you need the JDK to compile Java. That's basically the relationship between the two. So we're just going to sit here and uh, install the JRE 7. I know I've got it because Java always tells me I have it. Yes. I'll tell you to update. It's the most annoying thing ever. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close out of that, and I assume it's installed. So yay for that. So I'll close out. Um, you might want to make note of where you installed to. Now, I kept the defaults. Uh, the default for me, uh, since I'm on a 64-bit operating system, is going to be under Program Files, uh, Java, and then I have my JDK 1.7 right here. So that's the default right there. OK. Now that we have that out of the way, let's go. Um, now, this, the, uh, the actual URL is pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to type it into the address bar right here. Or you could just search Google for Android Studio. I'm going to type in developer.android.com SDK forward slash SDK. Hit enter. 
And there we go. We have a download link for Android Studio. So make sure to hop over to here and go ahead and click on download Android Studio and accept another license agreement. Which we of course read. Yeah, I read all my license agreements. They're really fun to read. I've never missed one. Yeah. Ever. It's my favorite thing. It's like I'm installing new software. It's my favorite this thing I look forward to. It's not the software itself, it's the EULA. No, the software is no fun. You already know what's going to happen there. Yeah. All right, well, this is going to take a little bit of time, so I think I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while this downloads. That um, is a fine plan. Yeah, you see it's a little bit larger than the JDK there, uh, totaling in at 817 megs. But fortunately, we're in 2015, and that only takes one minute to do. So we'll be our back. All right. So we just got Android Studio downloaded. So let's go ahead and click on the Exe. Do many people pronounce it Exe? Like I sometimes do, but I usually say Exe. I don't know. I have never heard anybody say Exe. Really? I've heard a couple people say it. All right. So we're going to uh, fast forward through that first page. Now, the second page, we're going to see we have Android Studio, Android SDK, Android Virtual Device, and the Intel Haxam driver. So um, that's actually really cool. Well, the first time when I installed Android Studio, it didn't include all this stuff. I mean, it would be really cool if the Intel Haxam driver actually was stable on Windows. Hint, hint, Intel, if you're listening. But um, since we're not going to be using the Android Virtual Device, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck both of these. But make sure that I install the Android SDK, which I haven't installed. So the Android SDK um, is not on my computer, so we're going to install it through this installer. And again, you'll see the Android SDK, the description is the collection of Android platform APIs, tools, and utilities enables you to debug, profile, and compile your app. Now, if you're interested in using the Android virtual device or the Hacks and the Hacksam driver, I would recommend installing both of these things. If you are wanting to use Guinea Motion, which I highly recommend, then go ahead and just grab the Android SDK. If you already have the Android SDK installed, uncheck this because you'll be asked later to locate your current installation of the Android SDK. I do not recommend people having multiple copies of the Android SDK on their computers because that gets really, really confusing. So if you have the Android SDK, uncheck that. If you don't, make sure it's checked. Otherwise, if you don't, if you don't end up with an Android SDK one way or the other, you won't be able to write Android code. So let's go ahead and hit next. Let's agree to the third EULA of the day. And um, so we see here that it's saying Android SDK install location. So um, uh, I'm personally not a big fan of that location, so I'm going to change it real fast. I'm going to create a new folder in my... Um, uh, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and change it to something that isn't in my app data folder. The reason I'm changing it to somewhere that it, it isn't in my app data folder is because the Android SDK is something that we're going to have to refer to quite a, quite often um, when um, wanting to do things like access ADB, uh, which we'll talk about later, of course, and uh, other Android-y things. So I prefer it to be in a more global location on my computer and not in my local app data folder, which um, and just too many clicks to get to, to my, for my taste. Anyway, you can put it wherever you want. I recommend somewhere that's easy to get to, however. So I'm going to hit next, and I'll hit install. And then um, this will probably uh, probably complete pretty quickly, so I won't worry about pausing the video. Instead, I'll just fill the video up with words by saying things like this. And you, need I, more wor you need more words than that. Yeah, I do. Actually, I might have to pause the video because uh, it's extracting the Android SDK. Oh, yeah, we should do that then. Yeah, okay. Um, we'll be back here in a minute. Alrighty, now that that is done, let's go ahead and hit next. And uh, let's go ahead and hit finish. Uh, we're not going to be doing anything in Android Studio, but I do want to get a first launch out of the way, just in case there's anything I'm forgetting. So uh, we're launching Android Studio now, and I'm going to go ahead and select that I do not have a previous version of Android Studio at the moment. So I'll hit OK. And we'll go ahead and just let it launch, let it launch, see if it asks us to do anything else. Um, 
just making sure the SDK is up to date. And uh, we should be good. Uh, one thing I will do with Android Studio, now I'll do it in the next video, just in case somebody skipped this video because they already had all the stuff installed. Uh, we'll go ahead and do some basic configuration of Android Studio in the next video when we launch it. But uh, let's go ahead and close that out because we are done with Android Studio for now. All right, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and download Getty Motion, the last thing that we need in order to get our development environment set up. So the way this is spelled is G-E-N-Y motion.com. So just type that into your address bar and you will be presented with the Getty Motion website. So let's go ahead and hit the Get Getty Motion button. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and just hit download on this. We have a license, but uh, it's something that you enter after downloading it. So what you wanna do is remember, go ahead and hit Getty Motion, go down to free and hit download, and then scroll down and find the download link wherever it's hiding. Um, it's the tiny one, Get Getty Motion. Uh, there's also an option for getting Getty Motion without VirtualBox. Now, seeing as I don't have anything installed in this computer, I'll want to get the other version, the version that contains VirtualBox. However, if you already have a VirtualBox instance that you're wanting to use, I do believe the Getty Motion installer will allow you to specify it. So if you do have VirtualBox already installed, you might want to get Getty Motion without VirtualBox. We'll go ahead and get Getty Motion. And um, it wants me to go ahead and have a Getty Motion account. So in order to do this, I'm going to bring this off screen real fast. And after I go ahead and log in, um, it will start the download for me. So all I did was I logged into my account, started the download. If you don't have an account, you want to go ahead and register. It's pretty straightforward, free, simple, just requires an email address sort of registration. So now that we have the installer, let's accept our fourth EULA for the day. Or not. Unless I skipped it somehow. I got because I was clicking through too fast. I don't know. Either way, it's installing. It seems to be installing pretty quickly too, so um, I'll just try to entertain you guys for the brief moment we have left here. Go find the EULA and read it. Yeah. <laughs> that would be that'd be awesome. Um, also, it's going to ask me to install VirtualBox because I chose the edition that came with it. So we'll skip through that. Uh, let's go ahead and install all that awesome stuff. So I hit next. I don't care about shortcuts, whatever. Uh, warning, network restart your network connection. Temporarily disconnect you from the network. All right. Goodbye, Steve. Awesome. <laughs> All right, um, let's see if I have an, an internet connection back up. Sure. Oh, so that was pretty quick. All right, so I'm gonna uncheck Start Oracle VM VirtualBox uh, after installation, because we don't actually need to launch VirtualBox. And you'll see that in a moment. So instead, I'm just gonna hit here with uh, Launch Getty Motion and hit Finish. Okay, so I'll close out of Chrome, and it's going to ask me, you do not have a virtual device yet. Do you want to add a new one? So let's go ahead through the process of creating our virtual device that we're going to be using throughout the course, at least one of them, because a little bit later, we're going to create a new one. Now, remember, Getty Motion is kind of a manager for A, Android, ice, or Android images that are compiled for x86, and B, an interface that wraps around the interface of VirtualBox. So let's go ahead and select yes to create a device. And um, it's wanting me to sign in again. So I'll be right back. And now I'm signed in uh, using my account. So now that I've done that, let's go ahead and look at what we're going to be using. Now I wanna go ahead and I wanna use 4.4.4. That's gonna be the device that we're gonna be primarily working against. Uh, we could certainly go ahead and work on um, uh, Android 5. Lollipop, but we're going to be focusing on KitKat. And the reason for that is KitKat has the largest market share and will for quite some time. Uh, the Lollipop adoption rate actually happens to be quite low, sadly. But even if it was high when working with Android, you want to make sure that your, that your software works 
on a large range of devices that are out there. And right now 4.4.4, well, 4.4.1 to 4.4.4 are primarily what people are using. I believe the figures at like 70, 80% of all Android devices are between 4.4.1 and 4.4.4. So that's mostly what we're gonna be targeting. Now, of course, we are going to be writing code cognizant of the fact that Lollipop exists, and we're gonna be using some new features that the SDK is gonna give us um, due to Lollipop's existence. But for the actual device that we're going to be using, it's gonna be 4.4.4 just because that's such a representative device. Uh, you'll also notice this weird thing right here, API 19. We're gonna be talking about what API levels are in a later video. Now, the device I wanna use is I wanna grab a Google Nexus 5. So I'm gonna grab that, and I'm just gonna click on it, and I'm gonna hit Next. And then I'm gonna name it, um, I'm just gonna name it Google Nexus 5. Just chop off the rest of that stuff. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. And I'll hit Next. And now it's going to download even more stuff, which is super fun. Downloading stuff is my favorite thing to do. I thought I was reading you, Liz. Uh, it's second favorite thing to do. Ah. Because after I download the stuff, I get to read the EULA. Ah. Yeah. And I ran out of words again. Yeah, that happens. Uh, see, this progress bar that Getting Motion uses really irritates me because I can't tell if it's a white bit scrolling past or a black bit scrolling past. <laughs> it's like an optical illusion. I thought you were going to launch into uh, progress bars <laughs> no. for a second. <laughs> okay, so the virtual device has been created successfully, so we'll go ahead and finish that. Now, here's an important bit. I'm going to hit this little tool icon to make sure a couple things are set properly. Now, first of all, I want to make sure that it has... Uh, between two to four processors. Otherwise, it's going to run very, very slowly. Second, I'm gonna take the base memory down to 1024, so one gig. Now, the reason for this is, uh, since we're gonna be running a lot of software while we develop, and we'll wanna be able to launch multiple emulate or multiple virtual devices, as well as Android Studio itself and all of that stuff, uh, I wanna make sure that I don't eat up all my memory with my virtual devices. Now, one gig is plenty for what we're doing. If you have an app that requires more than one gig to work, well, then you're doing stuff very wrong. So since we're only gonna be using these virtual devices to use one app at a time, uh, I'm just gonna plop this down to a gig. That should be more than enough. Uh, but again, make sure that you have four processors. Uh, if you only have a dual core processor, I would select two here. But uh, since I have a quad core multi-thread or hyper-threaded processor, I'm gonna select four. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And uh, let's go ahead and start it just to make sure it's going to work. Because I can't remember if I disabled... See that progress bar? See, look, you can't tell if it's a white thing going scrolling across or a black thing scrolling across. Anyway. Um, off video, I'm also going to put in my license key for um, Gaining Motion because we did purchase it. I highly recommend it. It's a very nice piece of software. It does, it does do some weird things every now and then. Like, occasionally, it'll, like turn my Android device into some sort of weird phone tablet hybrid thing and I have to delete and recreate it but that's really not a big deal and it's a thousand times faster than the Android emulator supplied supplied by the SDK and it's probably a hundred times faster and more stable than the Haxum uh, driver provided by Intel it was also the best one at running like multiples of itself wasn't it where you had two or three yeah, devices going. There's another thing called BlueStacks, but it isn't designed to run multiple copies at the same time, and it isn't configurable for screen dimensions and all that fun stuff. Uh, great for what it's useful for, which is running Android apps on your PC, not so great for development. This is specifically designed for development, which gives us a lot of great features to use. Anyway, we have a fully running instance of Go Away of Android 4.4. Dot four. So that's awesome. Stuff and things. Uh, I think that pretty much wraps up all of the installation that we needed to get taken care of. Uh, I hope we didn't bore you guys a whole lot, but I wanted to make sure that there was nothing I was missing. Now, hopefully when we actually go into Android Studio in the next video, there will still be nothing that I missed, but there might be. So... <laughs> If you open up Android Studio and everything just explodes, just go to the next video because I'm about 
to open up Android Studio, and if everything explodes, I'll show you guys how to fix it. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, I think that wraps up this video. I hope you guys had a f awesome time watching us accept Eulis. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be great in the next one. <laughs> All right. See you.